Today's show is about how to effortlessly lose belly fat. Today. Now, is that clickbait? No, 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 no. We do not do clickbait on this show. No, sir. We ain't bother with them kind of things, yeah. So for those who don't speak Jamaican patwa, I just said we don't bother with those kinds of things. Now, why does losing belly fat matter? Obviously, we have the aesthetic reasons, right? The thing is, when you get too much fat around your abdomen, specifically what's called visceral fat, grows around your internal organs, this can increase the risk of heart disease, diabetes, even some kinds of cancer, actually. Of course, for most of us, it's the aesthetic reasons, right? So the first easy thing to do is get enough protein. When people start cutting calories to lose weight, they tend to cut everything. Most people don't eat enough protein to begin with. So cut the carbs, cut the fat, cut the protein. Wrong, wrong, wrong. You can cut some carbs and or some fat. Don't cut the protein. Protein has so many benefits, right? Building muscle mass, reducing fat, helps you feel satiated. That helps you feel full, longer to digest, so you'll eat less calories. Also provides energy as well. Another very easy thing to do is just drink more water. If you're not drinking enough water, all these tips we're discussing is almost pointless, right? That's how important water is. Because a lot of you are drinking too many sugary drinks. If you start drinking more water, by default, you'll drink less sugar. Sugary drinks. Sugary drinks go down, belly fat goes down. You can even turbocharge this by drinking water before meals. Just two glasses. That's not difficult. Just two glasses. There was a study in the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism showed that just two glasses of water before a meal increased metabolic rate by 30%. <laughs> Another easy thing to do, again, we're sticking with this effortless theme, guys. Effortless theme here. I haven't told you to exercise or anything like that, right? You gotta sleep more. We're terrible at sleep. That's one of the things I've been terrible at myself over the years. I still sometimes struggle with this. The Canadian Medical Association Journal concluded that inadequate sleep was not only linked to a greater risk of obesity, but was also found to commonly interfere with weight loss attempts. There's so many ways bad sleep screws things up. It messes with leptin, which is that thing that makes you have sugar cravings the next day when you don't get enough sleep. Another thing you might want to start doing is counting calories. I think we've discussed this before, right? But there's no reason to not do this, specifically macros. There's so many apps nowadays that are easy to do this and they're free, like MyFitnessPal, there are other free apps out there. You know, if you're trying to go from point A to point B, driving the car, you have no speedometer, you have no GPS, your gas gauge doesn't work. What are the odds that you're getting from point A to point B? You need to track your macros. This ties back to what we talked about on top with protein, right? Protein is one of the macronutrients. If you don't know how much of you eating, you most likely you're not going to eat enough. Same way if you eat too many carbs or too much fat. Again, you have a problem, right? Now, what are some things that you're doing that you probably should stop doing? That again, even with the theme of effortlessly, right, is you guys are drinking too many calories. Sodas, healthy drinks. The problem with these sugary things, right, is spiking your blood sugar, which is gonna end up with more fat, right? Because you're gonna spike insulin. You know, insulin either stores glucose or fat, right? For energy, too much, spike your blood sugar too much, a lot of that energy is gonna get stored as fat. You're also eating too many refined grains, right? Which surprisingly is almost as bad as sugar. As a matter of fact, flour is worse than table sugar when it comes to raising your blood sugar. You notice a common theme here, right? You want to avoid raising that blood sugar. That just leads to getting fat or diabetes or both. Another thing that you guys do, I used to be terrible at this, eating right before bed. And funny enough, this ties into going to sleep on time, right? Does this ever happen to you? It's happened to me all the time. You eat dinner at a normal time, really normal time, but you stay up too late and you get hungry. Your ass gets hungry. Then you eat again and then you go to sleep. Do not do this. Do not do this. Big no-no. You see how these things correlate together? You need to eat dinner early enough so your ass can go to bed on time. If you don't go to bed on time, you're gonna mess up other things and again, you're gonna get fat. So you notice you, it's hard to do one without doing the other and you just mess one thing up, it has an impact on other things, right? Shoot for at least two hours. Let's call it three. So if you miss the third, you can two hours before. Now there's one caveat, one caveat. If you know what you're doing, protein before bed is good. That increases muscle protein synthesis. That's why you're not getting buffer, but that's, that's for another show. Right now we're just focusing on and ways to effortlessly lose belly fat. And effortless, the common theme, not clickbait, right? What are some extra effortless tips to lose your gut, <laughs> right? To shrink that tummy in a couple of months, right? Let's be realistic here. None of that lose the belly fat in two weeks nonsense or lose the fupa in two weeks. That's not possible. Not even if you're a mutant could you do that. Here's a simple one. Use smaller plates, right? Smaller plates. I mean, we've all grown up in condition to eat everything on your plate, right? I remember years ago, seeing this study. It was pretty cool. They took a bowl and they attached a 
device beneath it, the bowl was fixed to a table in a restaurant and it was artificially refilling the bowl with soup. And some people would just keep eating, keep dipping the spoon in. Several people would eat like two, three bowls of soup because you're conditioned. You know, they didn't even realize it wasn't going down. Think how crazy this because they're talking, sipping, talking, and they just keep mindlessly slurp, slurp, slurp. If you use smaller plates, you will eat less food. Trust me on this. Another easy one, eat a big breakfast. It's a common thing for overweight people to skip breakfast. I say that with many clients. Skip breakfast. Worst thing you could do, right? You're not setting yourself up for success. And you don't believe me, there's so many studies on this. Here's one. The Journal of Obesity found that participants who woke up to a hearty morning breakfast lost more weight than those who restricted their calories. Think about that. They ate more food and they lost more weight. Win-win, right? You're not starving and you're losing weight. Turning off the TV. This ties into sleep again, right? A study in the Merkel Journal of Epidemiology, say that fast two times, found that subjects who slept in the darkest rooms were 21% less likely to be obese than those sleeping in rooms with the most lights. <laughs> When you keep that TV on, what are you gonna do? Stay up and watch it. Have you ever had this happen to you? It's late at night, you're getting fatigued, falling asleep, and suddenly you get another surge of energy. It's the TV. All that artificial light hitting your eyes, stimulating your body, telling your body it's daytime, slowing down the release of melatonin. That's the hormone that makes you get sleeping, for those who don't know. All of that stuff is gonna make you stay up, which we already went over is very bad. Muy mal. Very, very bad, right? Even when you fall asleep with the TV on, sleep studies have shown that that artificial light disrupts your sleep, which disrupts your metabolism, i.e. burning calories to i.e. burn your belly fat. Keep healthy food around. Now this is a no brainer, right? But basically get rid of all of the junk out of your pantry. If it is not there, you cannot eat it and put healthy stuff in there. I think I've said this on other shows where when I do my ice cream cake sandwiches, if I'm losing control of myself, I'll just throw them away. Because you know what happened? Like tonight, if I want one, you know what I gotta do? I gotta leave my house, get in the car, drive to the supermarket to buy them. I have to really want that ice cream cake sandwich to go through all that trouble. So my pantry is pretty clean. I'll have some cheat stuff, but it's not that much. If your pantry is full of garbage, you know what's gonna happen? Eventually you're gonna eat it. Donate the food. The bad food, right? Get some more sunlight. This is another easy thing. Just get out more. A study in the journal PLOS1 found that exposing yourself to direct sunlight between 8 a.m. and 12 p.m. can reduce your chance of packing on the pounds regardless of activity level, caloric intake, or age. That's pretty big. We'll get into more detail on that and probably in another show, but you sleep properly, you wake up early, you go outside, the sun hits your face, lots of good things happen. That's why when you stay in the house too long, you get stir crazy, right? Or for those of you people who live in places with long winters, that kind of sucks. Or those people who live in those places that have higher suicide rates, that's not an accident. We all need sunlight, vitamin D. Don't add crap to your coffee. Now in the US, they say over 60%, 67% of coffee drinkers add some sugar, milk, cream, or some other garbage to the coffee. It's little, small little packets, but it's a ton. It adds up. Because most people who drink coffee drink a couple cups a day. The Starbucks stuff, that super sweet stuff, a gazillion calories in there, right? Just drink it black. I mean, as a matter of fact, coffee has some fat burning abilities, but if you got all that garbage, that's negated. Fill your plate with veggies. Like half of your plate, a third, a quarter, you know? Shoot for half, I would say. Worst case, a third. If you start eating vegetables first, it will fill you up. I remember my first coach, she told me this, that IFBB Pro Bikini Model is International Federation of Bodybuilding. She told me, Kirk, eat the veggies first, eat the meat second, whatever space you have left, eat the carbs. It was such simple advice and so practical. You can only eat so much dessert after you've eaten veggies, big piece of meat, and some regular carbs. Here's a unique one, spaghetti squash. I was surprised when I stumbled onto this, right? For those of you like your noodles and all that stuff, it's still thick and healthy, but one cup of this crap is only 40 calories. I was like, wow, 40 calories. And it's actually real food. It's not fake food. It's not made up food. It's real. So that's crazy. 40 calories. That's like nothing. For those who like things like asparagus, there is folate in asparagus. This is other things too, but there's a study in the British Journal of Nutrition that found that adding folate to obese patients that increased their weight loss success by 28%. 28%. That is huge. Of course, you could have some, some, some of you, you know, it may smell kind of funny <laughs> coming out one end, but that's a separate thing. Eat apples. What's that old saying? An apple a day keeps a doctor away. I think that's like a global saying, basically. Studies show that enjoying an apple before a meal decreases total caloric intake at that meal. You ever notice when you eat an apple, how it fills you up? It's simple, right? I mean, it's amazing. Just this one damn apple just really 
fill you up. It's practically impossible to overeat apples as well. You can eat one, two, then go eat your meal. There's some stuff on showing apples, how good it could be in the morning as well, but that's probably for another show. So those are some effortless, effortless things you can do. They're inexpensive and they're easy to do. None of those things involve sweat, going to a gym, starving, torturing yourself, none of those things. Well, I mean, if you empty the pantry of your favorite naughty things, then yeah, maybe that could be construed as torture. I don't know, but <laughs> yeah. Because you are determined to transform your body, you made it to the end of this video. To get more tips about how to look great and feel even better, check out one of these videos you see on the screen. I'm sure you'll enjoy them. So later's my massive. Mia galang now. For those who don't speak Jamaican patois, that's goodbye, my people.